That was amazing. That was amazing. That's one of the best overviews of customer experience I've heard in a long time. Are your brains full? Take a breath. We're going to fill them up again with a number of different perspectives. First, we have Melanie. Can we have the next slide, please? Melanie Seawert, SVP at SunTrust, is going to talk to you a little bit about customer experience from a small business angle. Same ideas work for all different size businesses. Melanie? Good job. Self-timing. <laughs> so our next angle is going to be about retail experience design. And we have Ian Rattray, VP of Creative Services at Retail One. He's got 35 years in the business. I've worked with him myself. Get ready for some good stories. Ian? And we have a clicker, yes? Yeah, clicker. Here's your face. Oh, there's my face. Oh, there's my God. Excellent. Good stuff. You're good. Thanks. If you uh, check out Ian a little bit later during the day, you will find out he has an unlimited supply of Scottish guys going into a bar jokes. So, all right. And next up, we have Marcella Lay. She's the VP of Client Services at Y Media Lab. She's going to be talking to you about drones and that kind of customer experience. Marcella, come on out. No, I'm going to, let's see. Good. No sound. It's all my fault, not Marcella's fault. All right. Um, Chandler or anybody back there, can you help us out with uh, the slides, please? Justin is doing something else. Okay, thanks. I would do another joke, but the first one was not so good, so I'm not going to go. <laughs> Marcella, what, can you guys hear me? All right. Marcella, what do you like most about customer experience in your role? Come on up. Sure. I think that the focus that we have now on the customer and not so much on the product or just on the business KPIs is what really gets me passionate about this. It's really caring about people and what they're trying to accomplish and how we make it simple instead of just trying to provide a product without understanding the value in the customer's life. It seems to be a theme. Are you picking that up from every different player? Oh, no. I can hear myself now. Um, focusing on people, really getting to know and understand them is essential no matter what discipline you're in, which angle you're coming from, or your position in the organization. If you're the CEO or a frontline person, you've got to really get to know customers. And there's a lot of joy and good understanding in that. Mm. Are we back? Challenge number five? Where would you like to be on Let's the slides? See. Right there. Right there. But All it's right. not. No sound. No sound? Do we stop it? Sound of helicopter whirring. <laughs> sound of audience entering. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hear a drone. They're silent. So here we go. <laughs> you were so well rehearsed for this, too. It just, it just happens sometimes. My apologies. It's okay. As long as they're okay. <laughs> okay. And you guys, don't worry. We're not going to cut out your lunchtime for this. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions from what they've heard so far? We can do a little Q&A. Any questions from Marcella? Very loudly, please. We don't have mics in the audience yet. <laughs> Amazing. You are unflappable. Good job. <laughs> My big takeaway from that is the value of anticipation. When you can do your customer's work before they even ask you to do it, it's already an amazing experience. Let's anchor some of what we've learned about the human-centered design process by meeting Joe Johnston, Senior Director of Experience at Sparks Grove. Joe, come on out. All right. <laughs> Better than that. Come on. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. So from this last presentation, you got a very good overview of how to think about customer experience design, how to be customer centered, what are some of the tools. Now let's talk to a print practitioner, Amanda, wrong one, there, there you go. You look much nicer like that. <laughs> Amanda Mewborn uh, is executive director at Piedmont and she'll take you through how it's actually done. You don't need this at all? I don't need, uh oh. That's not looking good. <laughs> Things that you told me about. We, we, we had a, a, a CXPA meeting several months ago at, um, 
where was it? Pont City Market. Pont, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Amanda presented there. It was absolutely amazing. And the thing that I took away that I'd love for her to chat about for a minute was how she got the community so engaged. Because when mm-hmm. you think about it, a hospital doesn't just belong to the people that own it. It belongs to the entire community. And it sits on a legacy of expectations. The mm-hmm. building is really not just the commemoration of the past brand promise, but it's the commitment to a new one. And it's very different. Talk a little Mm -hmm. bit about how you were able to gather all the information and get people on board because you had some heart surgeons and brain surgeons that are very hard to work (laughs) with. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so this, um, this started in 2014 with our planning. And for those of you that might not be familiar, it's Atlanta's kind of live, work, play area uh, that runs right behind the hospital. And so this will link in with the Beltline as well. Because I've been a patient in a hospital that I hate mm-hmm. is all the waiting. Mm-hmm. You have a very different perspective on waiting and on yes. supporting patients. Yes. So patients don't come to us to wait. I know that all of you have probably been to a doctor's appointment and you have to wait in that bus stop style waiting room. It's very frustrating. And in this building, we do not have waiting rooms because people don't come to us to wait. So there are times when family members can't be with a a patient, for example, when they're back in surgery in the operating room, a family member can't be back there. So we did provide some lounges um, during those times. But as I mentioned earlier, the key focus was to keep the family members at the bedside with the patient as much as possible. We also, uh, during this process, did what we called experience mapping. So uh, value is delivered in healthcare when you're interacting with a clinician. But when you're not interacting with a clinician, we call that the time between. And unfortunately, we can't just treat you and magically make you heal instantly. All of our bodies take time to heal. And so that time between is the time when you're not with a clinician and alone. And we focused our design on that time between and how do we uh, enhance the experience both for the patient and the visitor during that time. Wonderful. So you guys aren't worried. All of the presentations and all of the videos will be available for you to see online. So while you might not be able to see it today, let's try one more time. Nope. Um, you're going to be able to see all of that. And you can also yeah. see it already on Yes, it's YouTube. on YouTube. It's um, the Piedmont Atlanta Tower, if you Google on YouTube. And I was just going to talk you through the, the building, but you can look at that on YouTube as well. Cool. And do we, we have time for just one or two questions to make up for the, uh, the loss of the video. Would anybody like to ask a question of Amanda? This gentleman right here. I'm kidding. You didn't raise your hand. (laughs) Amanda, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Give her a big hand. Okay, I'm going to stand up here and take the heat for the clicker here. Can we have the next slide, please? All right, I'm going to take another risk and tell you a story that happened to me when I was in graduate school. I went to Thunderbird, which is out in Arizona, and it specializes in international management. So they have these executive programs, and people from all over the world come to the middle of the Arizona desert to learn about international management and some of the best practices. It was built out of an old Air Force base. So the oldest building, you know, kind of curved like this, all beige, so the bad guys couldn't see it against the desert ground, was the post office. So we'd all go to the post office every day. So I went to the post office to pick up my mail, hopefully a care package from my parents. Even though I was that old, it was still fun to get stuff. And there was a group of visitors. I think they were from China. They were all huddled together, brand new cohort of... um, a brand new cohort of folks. And one of them came over to me and they said in broken English, tell me what is that black and white picture on the wall? So I had to explain that that was our most wanted guy. Okay. So they went back to their group and they had a little huddle and they were talking, 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 talking. And then another person, a little bit more senior came over and he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, excuse me, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. He said, why didn't you keep them when you took their picture? (laughs) <laughs> all right and now we're back to windows i'm happy to take a couple of questions um you've had a very full day today uh, i run an experience design company called story miners we believe there's a big tie between story and experience i'd be so happy to answer a couple of questions whether it's about what you've heard so far what's coming next or something in general can i pick on somebody that's not looking like the guy in the beard right here on this phone. What's your question? No. <laughs> yes, nice and loud, please. Oh, 
I love it. And I think one of our speakers today is from Vox Pop Me, and we use it really early in the experience to actually get video feedback from customers about what some of their needs are. And I'll tell you more if you stop by our prototype booth. I see our slides up. It's my pleasure to introduce Ray Killebrew to you. He's the head of CX design and research at Primerica. Ray and I have worked together in the past a long, long time ago. And uh, Ray, come on out. Wait, now we have human technical problems. Wait. <laughs> Here he is, Ray Killebrew. Let's give him a warm welcome. Thank you, Mike. Hang out for a second. Good to see you. Yeah. I think Ray is the first, he's the first customer experience professional that I've heard of that tied baseball to customer experience. So kudos for that. Oh, I try to get something a little bit more relevant and timely. So, yeah. uh... You notice that Ray put all of his contact up here. He's very open to chatting with you for the rest of the day, and so are the other speakers. First, a big round of applause for all the folks who came up before. Thanks, Ray. Hey, man. All right. Good to see you. I need the, the clicker. And it's time for break. But since we're running a little bit behind, our break is only going to be six minutes long. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But we're going to shave just a few minutes off. So in 25 minutes, there are going to be some people out there with like shepherd's crooks trying to corral you to come back in. Please come back in as very, very filled. There's a lot to talk about, lots of different things. What I'd like you to do in the second part of the morning before we go to our lunch break is just collect your thoughts for a second and think about all the things that you've heard. Think for a second about the points that made the most sense to you and the ones that you're trying to double down on and listen a little bit more for that. We're going to have a number of different approaches that you're going to see. The first one is on the psychology of customer experience, yet another angle. Keep your mind open, not only to the things that you're comfortable with, but to the things that you don't understand yet. Try to connect the dots. Use this presentation as a way to build active knowledge in what you're doing. I think you'll get the most out of it that way. So thanks, everybody, for coming back on time. I'd like to introduce you to press the green button, please. It's working. Cool. Um, Ryan, Ryan Hamilton from the Goizueta School at Emory University, the Psychology of Marketing. Let's get started. Thank you, Ryan. Excellent job. I think when I do my next experience design project, I just might bring on a psychologist. What an interesting angle that gives you to your design. I'd like you to bring up now Tricia Houston, pronounced just like the city the COO of MMR Live. And she has a very interesting angle that I think you'll be able to build on from what you just heard from Ryan. Here you go. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Um, a long time ago, one of my mentors told me that there, by the way, we're taking a two-minute planned technology break. We figured it out. We're switching computers so we can play video. Uh, a mentor of mine told me that there's a fallacy of the, custom, uh, the perfect customer. So many times you go into a business and everything is set up so that it works for the ideal customer that walks in the door. You know, from the way you're greeted to your product selection, use the price checker, check out, all that stuff. And for those companies, they also have customer service departments. And what those people do is work with the bad customers. If you don't fit the model, you kind of go over to the customer service department. I think what we've just heard in some of the last few conversations is that it's best not to design around the perfect customer. You can't Six Sigma people. You have to optimize and use the technology to make their lives a little bit easier. When you put human in the design, you end up with much, much better results. Tom, are you anywhere near here, Tom Rocca? Yeah. All right. If you're close to Tom, I'd like to ask you a question. What's the difference between a service and an experience? And if you have a loud voice, you can just shout out, but he has a mic too. What's the difference between service and experience? And I, honest to God, cannot see any of you. It's like I'm talking to a black wall with a little bit of red here and there. So just shout out or ask Tom to bring the mic over to you. What's the difference between service and an experience? Point of view, that's one. What else? Service one way. Service one way. Excellent. Okay. That's all making sense. What else? Experience is memorable. memorable. What makes it memorable? The what? It impacts you, which is a sign of its emotion. 
right? So experiences have emotion, and yes to all the other answers as well. What's the other thing that a really, really amazing experience does for you? Makes you laugh, that's one thing, yeah? Makes you loyal? Repeat, that's not, is that the answer? Changes, okay. Each one of those has something in common. It's all about transforming people. The best experiences transform you from one state to another. You're better off and you know it as a result of the experience. I think we have slides up right now. So I'd like to introduce you, Chris Lamb. He works with Home Depot and he's going to talk to you about the hotel room of the future. Wait a minute. He just left IHG. That's why he's going to talk to you about the future. Chris, come on up. <laughs> Thank you. Remember that this one goes forward and that one opens the trap door. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Excellent. You hear that little beeping at the end? He came in like with one second left. That was really good. Doing his best to keep you on schedule. I loved how he was doing things along with the whole team at IHG for the customer. They were thinking on behalf of the customer. How does the customer want to feel? What do they expect next? How do they make it easy so you don't create a bad customer experience? Like, I'm embarrassed. I don't know how to turn on the lights. I've been an adult for so long. They're just really thinking that through really nicely. Good. Um, what was your big takeaway from the last couple of presentations? We've got this human thing going. Anybody care to shout out? This is another two-minute break as we switch back to technology. I have no joke jokes left, thankfully. All right. So our next speaker oh, is Sandra Mathis. She's with Strong Bridge Envision, customer experience shop here in town. And one of the things I'd like you to pay attention to when you watch her speak is she uses a lot of analogies. She also uses her hands a lot, which will hold your attention. But pay attention to how she uses analogies because that's an important part of storytelling. And as you're trying to get your new ideas across or win support for your projects, you have something to learn from here. So two things to learn. Come on out. Here you go, Sandra. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. You nailed it. Good job. Can I have a clicker? Great. Next up is Charles Stiles. Charles has two jobs. The first is the president of the MSPA, the Mystery Shopping Providers Association. Mark Michelson, founder, one of the founders of CX Talks, started that organization a long time ago. His other job is probably even more fun. He's a host on the Food Network for Mystery Diners. Come on up, Charles. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry. There we go. Which one's the uh, trap door so I fall it's to the, the stage? It's the small one, the small <laughs> one. Thank you very much. Thank you. So with mystery shopping, it takes one to know one. Whoops. Hang on. Wait, wait for your cue. Okay, cue. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dana Moore. Like me, she is an experienced designer. I can't wait to hear what you're going to say to everybody. And she's with Cox. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. Whoops. No, it's my fault. Hang on. Oh, is this the next one? No, here we go. Next up is Mike Gomez. Mike Gomez is a chief experience officer. He has some history at some firms that I think you'll be very impressed with, and you'll go, oh, so that's how you do it. But he's applying it his, his role in a brand new business. Mike, come on out. <laughs> Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Did you guys like the lunch today? Was that pretty cool? Amazing experience. Kudos to the guys in AV, even though we've had some little snafus and things like that, and to the wait staff. This is the first commercial event this facility has ever had. It's the first time CX Talks is here as well. So I think they deserve a great round of applause for really good work. Hey. There are a few new faces in the audience, a few missing faces in the audience. Let's also thank our sponsors. These are the companies that are helping out. And we also have some other associations that are all tied together. Mark Michelson and Carlos have done a great job corralling all these different disciplines so that you get a variety of different customer experiences and different perspectives. Continuing on that notion, I'd like to bring out Mary Drummond and her team of women. We're going to get a female perspective on things. This is going to be very interesting. It's a 30-minute session. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Wonderful job. It's hard to be a guy and follow that. It's really tough. But I do feel really good that the name of my company is Story Miners. Wow, we got a lot of plugs for story there. 
Um, next up, we've, had, we've heard from women, we've heard from men, we've heard from a group of women. Now we're going to hear from a man and a woman. David Johnson, the founder and president of Decoda, a cognitive sciences company, he'll tell you what that is, is coming up with his client, Jen Euler from Fleet Corps. I think you'll also find this interesting. Guys, come on up. Hey, we were having a discussion um, backstage. I hope you couldn't hear us. But one of the things that we realized is that we're all a little bit biased. So guys, this is a message for the guys. Next time you hear from a woman or a team of women on your team, something that doesn't really like quite sound right or doesn't match your logic, don't pull back. Don't say no. Lean in a little bit more and ask some questions and try to find out what's different about that perspective and how can you be better. And the same is true for all the different perspectives. So thanks again to our, our speaking panel. Next up, we have Tareva Robinson, a solutions consultant from Zendesk. You guys know what Zendesk does. If you don't, she's going to tell you. But this is where the rubber hits the road. It's one thing to talk strategy. It's another to get things to happen. Let's see what she has to say. Tareva, come on out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank You'll you need so to much. push that. Okay. Amy Ramsey from Field Agent is up next, and you're going to find out what a field agent is and does. Here you go. Thank you. Next up, we have Gus Safanari from Sitecore. I learned about that company years ago. They were one of the best at personalization, making the website really respond to each customer, and now they're doing that across channels. Gus, come on out and tell them the story. All right. That's a clicker there. There you go. Thank you. Now, which one's the advance? That's the, the advance. Big room. That's the big one. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Gus. Well done. So that wraps up the tech showcase part of what we're doing. When we get back, we're going to hear from about six or seven companies that are mostly Atlanta headquartered, so you get a local perspective. Right now, I'd like everyone to stand up. Come on. You trust me. I've gone, we've been through a lot together. Come on. And now go have a break. <laughs> Hey guys, we have some really exciting news. Um, we found out what this little green button does right here. All right, now we know, it's a little laser pointer. So um, John Davis is gonna come out. He is in charge of building, well, he does service design work. As an experience and a service a little different. He might explain that to you. And he works with Coca-Cola. He's in a shared services group. So please give a warm welcome as we start round three for John Davis. John, that was great, thanks so much. So that was John Davis. Lisa Van Kesteren is next. She's the founder and CEO of a company called C-Level HX. And the H stands for human. We're going to hear about the human experience from Lisa. Come on out. I was expecting a drum roll. <laughs> Thank you. All right. After all that hamburger talk, we're going to switch to chicken. Um, Leo Chan is senior innovation lead at Chick-fil-A. And I asked him how he wanted to be introduced, and he said, say, Leo Chan, innovation leader at Chick-fil-A. So I did my job. Here you go. Very strong. Good job. Thanks very much. So thanks, Leo. Next up, we have Claire Mason. She's the CX manager at Travelport. You guys know when you drive by on Cumberland, you see the big Travelport sign? They're a, what's called a GDS. I can't remember what that stands for, but it has a lot to do with travel. Getting the back end of travel to work is what it's all about. The hard thing in travel is you might sell your client something, but you have three or four different providers supplying the experience. So making a promise in the travel business is one of the most difficult in the world. Let's see what she does. Claire, come on out. Thank you. Nice job, well done. Thanks, Claire. You know, the last few presentations, I think, have given everybody some really good food for thought on how do you actually do design? What is the structure like? How do you move from strategy into action? Our next presenter is Will Payman. Will is from Macquarium, our, one of our title, our title sponsor. And um, he is an Englishman on our shores for about 20 years. He asked me to pre-apologize for his accent but I think you'll find it entertaining nonetheless. Will, come on out. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. It's round four. I feel like somebody should be walking around with one of those little signs like it's a boxing match. I spoke with some of you during break and some of you are like, your heads are swelling and others, your hands are cramped because you're writing so much. 
It's not going to stop. What can I tell you? Um, our next speaker is Rebecca Rusk. She's an enterprise user experience manager, new at the Home Depot. She also helped organize this event last year, and she's here representing the IXDA, International, the International Experience Design Association. So come on out. Rebecca. Thanks. So I like the idea of being out on the front lines to get things done. It's a very different perspective than sitting in the office and just getting streams of data coming into you. Florian Vollmer is a senior design manager in retail tech ops at NCR, and he's also involved in service design on the front lines. Please welcome my colleague for a long time, Florian Vollmer. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Appreciate it. Florian, thank you so much. We're going to wait just a second. Does anybody in the audience have a good joke? <laughs> well, let's just do a little ad lib thing here. Say your name. I'm Liz. And what do you do? I am a research manager at User Testing. And what is user testing? User testing is a platform that helps you gather human insights to impact your customer experiences. And then what's the difference between a human insight and other kinds of insights? They're, they come directly from your customers. They're truly from the human themselves, their emotions, their reactions, their perspectives. And you told me backstage that we're going to talk about something very specific. We're getting in the weeds on this one. Yes. And we're going to talk is... about my favorite topic, which is research. My second favorite topic is wine. So we can talk about that at 630. Um, but first, we'll focus on research. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I think we're almost ready. Do you have a joke? No. No, okay, good. <laughs> I learned first thing this morning. That Don't was do my joke, <laughs> was that we could talk about wine. <laughs> All right. You are good to go. Thank you. All right. Hi, everybody. So we're, we've seen all kinds of cool things. We're going to see how much po more powerful video can be in terms of understanding what your users really want, what they really think, what they really feel. I'd like to invite Travis Nielsen, VP of Partnerships for Vox Pop Me, to the stage. This guy on the screen right here, Imram Anwar, I just met in the back. He's got a very interesting history. He was the guy who brought internet email to Pakistan. So .pk, that's him. He brought credit cards to the country as well and introduced those. So this is a real rubber meets the road kind of guy. He's working for Microsoft right now in customer success, and he's going to be talking about customer experience design is not rocket science. Let's see what he has to say. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Which button's working? Forward, back, explosion. Good thing I have an electrical engineering degree, so I know how to figure this out. Well done. Thanks so much. <sighs> One more to go. It's my honor to bring out Mark Michelson, one of the founders of CX Talks, my friend, my colleague, my vendor, my client. Um, the story is, I think we met like 12 years ago or something. You called me and said we knew like 70-something people on LinkedIn. Early days of LinkedIn. Early days yeah. of LinkedIn. Yeah, now that there's was... like 500 or 1,000. Yeah. Common. Yep. Oh, cool. so, thank you very right. much, Mike. Did, Mike did a great job with MC oh, today. Thank you. Thank Big you. hand for Mike Wittenstein. And if you have a chance, make sure you get up, get up to see him at his booth up there. He's got a fun little game going on.